The new Range Rover astounds more than ever, with noise-canceling speakers in their headrest, revolutionary off-road technology including Wade Mode TM, and now we've taken the split tailgate to a whole new level, so that you can enjoy sitting in the back of your Range Rover anywhere in the world in comfort. From the rolling hills of Ontario, to the sands of the Sahara, to the plains of the Serengeti, to the beaches of southern Spain, to the beaches of southern Spain. Why aren't these places changing? You've broken down, haven't you? Yeah. James, what are you doing? Are you, are you filming a fake commercial? No. Is, you're making fun of Range Rover reliability, aren't you? You are. Yeah, you caught, yeah, you yeah, are. You caught me. This is a new Range Rover. I'm just having fun. We don't know if it's going to be unreliable. Also, it's a myth that, that Range Rovers are unreliable. There's absolutely no basis in reality whatsoever. Did you walk it? Yeah. Yep. Oh, I see. You've broken down. You're watching Throttle House. I'm Thomas. And I'm James. And this is the brand new Range Rover First Edition. But why would you buy a new Range Rover when you can buy an older one? Many, many reasons. James says many reasons, because if you want Range Rover credentials and don't have $200,000 to part with, you can instead buy one of these for a tenth of the price, and then split the other $180,000 between 10 easy maintenance payments over the next 10 years. Not really. Okay, maybe. Probably. This is a 2010 Range Rover HSE, and now you might say it's a bit of a bargain. Who needs bargains when you have excessive income. This Range Rover First Edition is a marvel. So in this throttle house old versus new, let's steep ourselves in the UK's most opulent SUV. What about Bentley? The UK's second most opulent. What about Rolls Royce? Third most opulent SUV. Let's do this. And if you're new to throttle house, we do car reviews, track tests, and quite a lot of messing about. So subscribe, hit the bell. Okay, before we start driving, yes. you need to see what you're about to get into because respect the new Range Rover. I do respect it because it's really cool looking. It's cool. They, I have to say they've that. Gone, they've gone with this modern, I don't want to say minimalist, but... Uh, is it minimalist? Minimalist. Okay. <laughs> it's kind of, I would say post-opulent actually is a word I would do. Oh my God. Listen, Thank you, Rolls-Royce, for taking yeah. the word minimalist and making well, it. Well, Mr. Range and Mr. Rover have caught, <laughs> caught onto the same thing that the, both RRs have done the same thing. Where okay. they haven't gone ostentatious. It's not a pure sangue. It's not yeah. a Urus. It's Wait, not what a was that? What was it? Did you... Have you learned how to pronounce it? Piro Sangre. Piro Sangre. The Ferrari SUV. Yes. Uh, and it's not a G-Wagon. They, they, they know that there's the imminent uprising of the lower classes. So it has to be what? more subtle. <laughs> and so saying, now it's just yeah. gone clean. So the lines are clean. We've got the, the, the sill line here goes straight to the glass. And it, but it's still very recognizably arranged. See, that, now that you've pointed that out, that is really obvious to me now. Yeah. I was like, why does it look so clean on the side? And that lack of like a rubber bumper? Yeah. Rubber baby bunky bumper on the side is actually really, really nice. It's very nice. Like and the they've, they've hidden the C pillar behind the glass the same way they did with the Defender. Yeah. Uh, and we've also got uh, the the door handles. Don't think toilet when you think flush. Think right. Range Rover door handles. Uh, and even this is this is a almost $10,000 paint option. This is uh, Sunset. Of course it sunset is. Sunset <laughs> something. In, well, this comes in five colors. It comes in okay. black, black, gold, gold, and gold. Yeah, they have different That's names. That's very Range Rover. They have different yeah. names for them. But, <laughs> yeah. uh, and this has the black shadow package. So this is gold. This is one of the gold. Yeah, this okay. Is, this, they're, all the other ones aren't, I think they're all free actually. Or, one, yeah. or, or This is the most expensive though. Okay. Almost 10 grand just to get it, it into satin. Uh, and this has the black shadow package. So the things, this would normally be silver. Or that, that would be silver. Right. And that's a, like a thousand bucks. Okay. But you can't option that without the $3,000 extra black 23 inch rims. 
uh, and we'll talk about those more when we're driving. But yeah, absolutely clean, evolution of the design. Oh, speaking of which, evolution of the design, I must say that it looks like a new version yeah. of this. Well, like, except question. you can see the tail lights on these, whereas these tail lights, don't, you don't notice them until they're lit. I have friends like that. Uh, but what, it's, it's, it's given way. It's given way to a boat tail design, and it's people have a bit of a problem with it. They're trying to get used to it. Why so, are there two shark fins? Oh yeah. So okay. Because um, is this going to be interesting? Or no, am I want to no. Move it's, on? it's a it's a it's a quick fix on a failed thing that has actually been true for years on Range Rovers and Land Rovers. Oh. Uh, if it has a panoramic roof. Apparently, it interferes with the signals, so they need a second shark fin. Oh, I see. So what they did is instead of re-engineering it and fixing the problem, they yeah. just added different things in or more things to try and fix the problem. Yeah. That's new for them. They've never done that before. Um, I just wanted to, to point that out to you. This is the L322 generation of Range Rover, right. okay? And within this generation, it was a, a wonderful, like, up and down roller coaster of different ownership. So, in the early years, it had BMW electronics and engines. Right. But you're lucky because BMWs aren't reliable. It's naturally, you want something reliable. So, this one has a Jag engine in it. Tom, that, that doesn't sound reliable. No. You're right. It's not. Oh, okay. Um, okay, but listen, I want to point something out. Yes. For one and three quarter paint jobs, yeah. you can buy this whole SUV. Yeah, but that makes sense because look how beautiful the sunset uh, with Saturn is. It's a whole SUV. Yeah, it's, it is. It is. Yes. And it's the right trim as well. So this is the, what's this, the HSC Lux autobiography, oh, whatever. Yes, exactly. And then this is the first edition. So this would be like, the, this is like autobiography basically with a few extra badging. Pretty much. Yeah. So a few extra badges, sorry. So anyway, so what, I, this is one of the rare times that I've brought out an old vehicle and I've done it properly. This is a high mileage vehicle. It mm -hmm. doesn't cost very much and it's in amazing condition except for the paint. Except for the paint. Yes. Except for the paint. Yeah. Uh, but I mean, listen, these are, these are reliable. No, but they're not. The whole reputation of it. That, why do you think this costs 10% of what this costs? Okay. Okay. So full disclosure, uh, this has a five liter Jag engine in it, which uh, routinely suffers catastrophic engine failure because the uh, timing chain guides go. Right. And then you have to replace them. And that's like $7,000. Uh huh. Yeah. Okay. Um, but that's it. That's a, okay. So that's fine. Actually, that's, that's, that's what I thought. I lied. It's not $7,000? No, that's not it. Oh. Um, so, <clears throat> you know when you go on a forum, yeah. and, you, and you're like, listen, I'm thinking about buying an old you know, BMW 3 Series. What do you, are, are they as unreliable as everyone says? Yeah. And everyone on the forum says, no, you'll be fine. It's overblown. It's just a myth. You just got to take care of these five things, and it'll be reliable forever. That's not how it goes on the Range Rover forum. Right. Okay? What, 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 what happens is you say, hey, I'm thinking about buying a 2010 Range Rover, and everyone says, don't. Yeah. Just don't. Just run. Please run. Never buy one. Um, Apart from mine, which is for sale. Yeah. <laughs> it's got a few <laughs> little things going on. things you better to do. <laughs> so, so a very lovely gentleman named Cliff, I don't know, I know him personally, but right. he wrote an entire guide on all the stuff. If you do want to make the plunge into this generation of Range Rover, he wrote a guide for all the things you need to look for. Okay. Yeah, no, it's, pre it's pretty short. Like a pamphlet. Yeah, it's like a, it, it's a, it's a, it's, it's a book. It's a book? Yeah, it's a book. Um, oh, oh, I'm just no. going to read you a couple of the things. Okay. 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 Um, it's, re it's really quick. It'll only be here for a couple seconds. Yeah. <clears throat> um, Rust in near the rear panel and fender. Uh, you should look for rust near the tailgate. Uh, water ingress into the right-hand compartment where many or most electronics reside. Function of all speakers. Uh, function of all audio and video sources. Signs of water ingress near the sunroof and each door. Sign of the headliner dropping. Sounds of ticking or belt squealing. Open the hood and idle the engine. Listen to the mechanical noise of the chain hitting the block. Don't want that. Operate the lane screen and the navigation screen. Operate the steering wheel, heater, and other buttons. <sighs> Check seat base for cracking. Check the leather for cracks. Engage each level of the air suspension in this manner, normal access or high. Listen and look for any leaks, only suspension knocks. Check for rear luggage divider. These are expensive. Check for full rear spare and tire changing gear. Check for damage on the roof. Check for blocked sunroof drain plugs that will cause rust. Check for the function of the retractable rear mirrors. 
Check for the parking alert. There should be an audible alert from both the front and the rear when approaching objects. Check under the engine for tidies. For signs of rear different differential replacement, transmission replacement on the 03 to 05 L322. Try to bring an OBD sensor. Scan after two on or off cycles. Lower the suspension fully. Turn off the vehicle to raise the highest selectable height. Bring soap and water and a spray bottle and a flashlight. Look and listen for leaks in the front air springs at the highest selectable setting. Turn off the car and leave the door open. Drive the vehicle over a few bumps with the windows down and listen for clunks. Feel for looseness in the steering rack. It... I'm done. No. Yeah, that's it. That's all, that's all you have to look out for. Uh, that's not much, actually. No, it's not bad. Um, no, I think it looks the part. I it think absolutely, it's, it looks and, 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 and you know what? It's got some really cool tech inside. Yeah, I'm expecting this to be, I know 12 years doesn't sound like a lot, but when it comes to tech, I'm expecting this to be real bad. In you go. Okay, all right. Okay. Yeah, you know what? Pretty nice. You ready? Oh. That, my friend, is a digital gauge cluster. It is, isn't it? Yep. And a, and a nice one. A very nice one, I don't, actually. No, don't get me wrong, the black level was on Audi 2022, but... But they're pretty close. Well... Look how nice the, that the is. the graphic is simple. Yeah, the, gra but the graphic is simple, but the graphic in a looks good like in a gauge good clusters. Yeah, 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 it in looks a good like way. a gauge cluster. It's easy to gauge. Um, <laughs> the gauges. 142,000 kilometers. Yep, but does it look like 142,000 no, kilometers? No, this, is, this is to the test Thank of time you. far more than I ever expected it to do. All right, so I got a few things to point out here. Yes. Okay, very key important things. First of all, wood, leather, 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 leather. Okay, that's not leather, but the seats are, and they're incredibly adjustable. Like you yep. can adjust your headrest and the tilt and the lumbar. And since it's the Lux package, we got heated and cooled seats, a heated steering wheel. And very, very crucially, very crucially, when BMW was loaning electronics and interior bits to this generation of Range Rover, yeah. it was, plagued with the, the typical BMW interior plastics issue, which happens in E46s, and I know this far too intimately. Basically, the outside plastic would wear off, and it would be a different color underneath the plastic. Right. The Jag plastics don't do that, because they're the same color all the way through. So if you scratch them, they're still that color. So that's why this all looks really nice and new. It does, it does look surprisingly new. If you told me this was like a mint 40,000 kilometer one, I'd believe you. Yes, honestly. And, and, and it's not like the technology is that far off, right? So we've got all the, all the driving modes, right? You've got sand and snow. I can actually go, this is a touch screen, four by four info, right? Mud ruts, grass, gravel, snow, sand, changes, differentials, ride heights, air suspension, the clear. whole stuff. And this is a touch screen and it's really quick. Okay, that, okay. So I clicked it. it. Press okay, it I'm gonna press it. You there you go. You have to believe See? and press. You have to believe and press. Yeah. But yeah, honestly, that is, there's, it does looks old. There's nothing wrong with it. Electronic, those work, right? There's, it gives your disc changer. Yeah, I don't there. think, there's nothing we've tried. I've got my cooled seat. Yep. There's nothing we've tried. That doesn't work That doesn't here. work. Yeah. Cooled seat's quite impressive, 2010. I mean, they, they existed back then, but like the fact that you can get this whole, this is why these are so dangerous. They're so dangerous because you sit in here and you're like, I'm sure the timing chain will be fine. It's not going to blow up the engine. Are, I'm just going to buy one of these for 18 yeah. grand. These are the sexy mermaids that the sailors saw. <laughs> the, the, this is a siren. Don't, don't this is a siren of a car. That is exactly what this is. All right, well, let me show you what's going on in the new one. Because, well, it can't be better than this. So well, as of this, really. as of this moment, we have no evidence to suggest that it's a siren. <laughs> it's, okay. just a, it's just a beautiful... Range Rover. Range Rover. Serving drinks to the docks of the people. What? S Sandy, you're a fine girl. We're just gonna let James talk. I'm gonna go get another car now. Oh, Guardians of the Galaxy. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> Soft close. Oh, is it? Yeah, you, Ooh, you can actually get the new Range Rover with like the Rolls-Royce power doors. So when you put your foot on the brake or you press the button, they close for you. Oh, you were trying to sing Brandy. You're, you're a yes, fine yes. girl. What a good... Yeah. I, I don't, I you're, you're still not there, but that's okay. <laughs> we'll, we'll work on it. Um, okay. All right, so welcome to the modern day luxury. This is very nice. Very nice. So, very nice. So you can get... <gasps> leather. Yes, so this has semi-aniline leather. What which does that mean? We've come across it before, and I, I've since researched it. Okay. Basically, it's a high-quality leather with a slight pigment and a slight protective layer so that it will always look like this. 
So that remains to be seen. Only, yeah, it does <laughs> remain. But le- <laughs> leather pure. We had it in the LX, I think. Leather, mm-hmm. leather purists will say they want it to patina like normal leather, but I think in a car you don't want that. Okay. But yeah, it's very, it's quite lovely in here. These seats, I think you've noticed, are immediately quite a bit more plush. The seats are really wide and nice. Right, yes. I mean, the, the, the seats are nice in that, but they're just a bit bigger on this. And just the luxury. I hope you don't like tactile buttons because they're gone. <laughs> Screen, screen, screen. screen. We all screen for ice cream. But like the, the climate controls, where you push and pull these to adjust the heat. Those are great. Yeah, Those are I great. don't mind that. And this screen can be haptic feedback. I've turned it off. It's curved. It is a curved screen. Yeah. Um, and then these you have to really press. I don't, I'm not big on these. It pushes that whole panel. Yeah, but like if you do it gently, nothing. Like look how hard you have to press that to do anything. It feels like you're not supposed to do that. Yeah, I'm not. Right? I'm not big on that. No, no that's not. Okay. But otherwise, everything feels incredibly tactile, incredibly high end. Like no, no, no. It's beautiful in here, and it's very post opulence, as the other RR company would say. RR, which is turning us into seals now. <laughs> um, this is no. This is honestly really nice. I don't What's think. What's this? I, is this another? Ooh, a cool a little cooler there. Oh, you got double sunshade. I see. Oh, double rainbow. All the way across the sky. <laughs> the, uh, the the gauge cluster is nice too. It, yeah. Can you customize it? You though? can. Okay. You can. So you can. You can. Ch- so this is in the three pronged focus yeah. panel or whatever right. it is, um, and you can change what these are. So I've got music, my speedometer, and then uh, my fuel economy there, just yeah. to remind me that I am in a 4.4 liter V8. Um, <laughs> and then you can change it to display that. You can do a full map, or if you want to pay homage to the older one. Boom. Dials. Oh, they look very similar too. Yeah, better black levels though. And Barely. The, and there's some trees in it's the background. It's just shinier. There. Tree, That's all it is. Trees though. There's trees? Yeah. Where's the trees? I don't see any there's trees. There's trees. It's a bit bush. Oh, okay, yeah, I, yeah. there's a bit of a bush. It looks like someone's front lawn on, on, in your gauge cluster. Yeah. Uh, okay, so you know what I really, really like? Yeah. Is that I love it when we do an old versus new, and the new one feels like a genuine evolution of the old one. Yeah. Right? This is, they haven't gone weird with it, they haven't tried to do something. To unnecessarily different. All they've done is just evolve it, make it more clean, more modern, more Qu- quality techy. wood, quality yeah. leather. Yeah, it's all still you can, there. You can get the, this. There's a new material now. If you don't want the leather, if you don't want to kill cows, is it the same stuff that's in the Defender? That kind of like, uh, it's, it's like a rugged fabric-y leathery yeah, yeah. thing. It's yeah, like, it's, it, No, it's not leathery. It's more cloth-like. Yeah, 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 yeah. Which yeah. I kind of like, and I like mm-hmm. a lot of the EVs are doing that as well. I, I, I like the feeling of that material. So. There's nothing wrong with it. Yeah, but I do like the leather. And we've got this giant panoramic sunroof, which, Huge as we know, headroom. causes two shark fins. <laughs> um, so don't go swimming with a panoramic sunroof. <laughs> um, but let me let me take you for a drive in this. Let me let me show you what it's like to be in... Okay, do you mind if I sit in the back seat to experience the luxury? No, you need to. Oh, yeah, okay. you need to. Okay, off I go. All right, you are now in the back seat. Of the new Range Rover. I very much am, and it is very nice. I'm gonna have to say that. Like this seat, like it really, like it reclines. There's like a bit that comes out here, and I have a foot rest, but I can't seem to figure out how I put that down. All right, I'm just gonna put my center console down here. You're a common man. How do you do this? Is it? There's a button. Oh my god, it's powered. Yes, all those seats. Why? All the back seats are powered. They all kind of do this song and dance to, to move around. I kind of don't like that because I'd rather just be able to put it up. You know what that did? That took longer than I would have taken to just pull the thing. Yes, but it's worth it because in there you have an entertainment screen. I do. I got thing. stuff that I can. Okay, so yeah. how do I? What is? What does this do? Okay. It's can a, I? Can I stop it? Uh, I don't believe so. It's it's gone now. Yeah. Engineering. Okay, it's back. Yeah, this is pretty cool, actually. So you'll find if you what open the thing, there's a mirror. Why is there a, like a hand mirror? It, it was specifically requested by the actor Michael Caine, but he ordered it for himself. I don't think he ordered it for his name though. He just it's just the way he says his name. Is it Michael Caine? Michael Caine. Yeah. Michael Caine. That's what that mirror is for. Yeah. Okay, that makes sense. Tell me about the engine. Okay, so this has the 4.4 liter twin turboed V8 that you might find in a BMW 50i because it is the same engine. Oh, really? Rain, yes, Range Rover oh. have sourced it from BMW, so they haven't given up their BMW roots. <laughs> yeah, that's right. All right, put your foot down. Sounds a bit different than the BMW 4.4 liter. 
Did they adjust? I'm sure they adjust some, adjusted some stuff. They've changed some stuff in the name of off-roading. Like they've got a different oil pan and the intake's higher. Oh, for like waiting and for right. like hills and stuff. But okay, otherwise, that makes sense. it's a 523 horsepower V8. Okay. There are a few different engine options. There's going to be a plug-in hybrid. There's that P400 that we had in the Defender, that V6 with the yep. mild hybrid. Yep. And there's going to be a full EV Range Rover, which I'm very, very interested in. But don't worry about fuel economy, Thomas, because oh, okay. this is the most aerodynamic luxury SUV you can buy. 0.3 drag coefficient. Oh, so that's probably pretty fuel efficient then. No, no okay. not really. And also, <laughs> also, I seem to remember that the Tesla Model X has yeah. a 0.25 drag coefficient. This is quick. So I guess they're suggesting that that's not a luxury SUV. Maybe it's not. I feel like it's quite luxury. I think there. it's pretty luxurious, to be honest with you. Um, yeah. Um, rear screens, lighting. Okay, there's lots of stuff to play with here. Ooh, I can change my ambient lighting back here. I'm on sunset orange and I can choose to animate it. Is something happening? Yeah, so the, and there is a long wheelbase one, right? So you're you're in the, this setup, but if you have a long wheelbase, you can get a three row. Well, I mean, this has got a ton of space. Yeah, honestly. oh, oh it's, it's very lush there, very lush. No, this is incredibly comfortable. This is like S-class comfortable back here for me. Yeah. In terms of like the seat comfort, the space, like the all the stuff. And it's way more comfortable in the EQS. So if they, <laughs> sorry, EQS, if they make this an EV, then it's going to be a really nice, luxurious EV. But it is quite heavy. There's a lot of mass to hustle. But this has a 48-volt thing that feeds the anti-roll bars to control body movement. Oh, like a Bentega. Yes, exactly. So it helps maintain, I guess, that kind of boat-on-plane feeling. And but, it, well, yeah, it controls the side-to-side -side motion so it doesn't move too much, right? No, but it still rolls hard in the corners, unlike the MyBuck GLS. Oh, well, it has curve mode, But that, that that feels revolutionary. That, yes, and it does. This doesn't, yes. this doesn't match that. But feel the roll there. Oh, it's there. It's no. there. <laughs> it's definitely still the Range Rover. Yeah. That was a bit scary. Yeah. You do that in an X7, it doesn't feel like that. No, <laughs> and so that, that, that makes me wonder, because, you know, this has certain things. I'm thinking about the competition, like the Escalade, you know, the Escalade doesn't pitch, but then neither does this really, which the X, even the Alpina X7 pitches badly. The, but the Alpina XP7 is, is, a, is a weapon. And it's, it's, a, it's, it's, it's like 10 or 20 grand cheaper than this somewhere. Yeah. But it's the same price range. The ride is very nice. This is so at home on the highway at speed. Is it? But it, where it, I think this does fall down in some places. Like, it, if, kind of like my Toyota Century, uh, if you do hit a pothole or, or just cracks in the road. Yeah. You, you, it is quite sensitive to that. This is very smooth. That's probably going to do with the, what is it, like 23 inch wheels? Yeah, I don't know why. It, they, just it, give it more sidewall. They're getting why out not? of hand. These wheels are getting out they're of hand. They're completely out of hand. It's very insane. I've got this lovely Meridian sound system. I think it's Meridian. Um, although I did try the Harman Kardon in the old one when you weren't looking at that. It it's is pretty good. Very good, it? yeah. It is pretty good, yeah. I've also got rear wheel steer in this, which I and believe is a Range Rover first. Oh. And so the rear wheels go seven degrees. That's pretty good. So it's, I don't, it's not the same as a Maybach, which I think what was it. I can't even remember it now. Like yeah, fifteen like, degrees. Yeah, like, ten, ten at least. But this it makes it so easy to maneuver. The, the problem is the, the problem is is there's something about a Range Rover that just you just lost the tail a little bit there. <laughs> there's something about a Range Rover. It's a boat tail. It's just cool. It's just cool. Yeah. But the, but the best thing about Range Rovers is 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 the ruggedness and that and that kind of longevity. Yeah. That's not the right word, actually, is it? No. no. It, um, it's okay. It's the, it's the ruggedness and the, the like, levity with which you approach its reliability. Yes, You're exactly. Just, you know, right? Yeah. I, I think that uh, I think that the, the old one, it, you know, it's got a, it's got the same spark that this does, and I think I'd like to show it to you. But first, I want to figure out how I turn on my cooled seats. So I go here. Hey, if I go to back. Enjoy it. Oh God. All right, James. This is where the real action happens. Yeah. Yeah, look at this, five liter V8, flat out. So I've looked this up. This does yep. just over seven seconds to 60. That's pretty quick. Whereas the one we were just in does, I think, mid fours. Well, you know what? There's a supercharged version of this, okay? Yes, yeah, there is. This only has 375 horsepower, 375 pound-feet of torque. But that other one has hundreds more horsepower. And the equivalent amount, worse fuel economy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And you don't want to go any worse than this, because this is not good. 
not good. It's no. not good on fuel. It feels pretty good back here. It's not. It's not the same. It hasn't got the read the road tech. It hasn't. You know. I don't need any of that. No. I'm. I'm reading. I'm reading the road. You don't need it because you're worried it's going to break. Yes. This thing's old. You know. <laughs> I, I didn't think it was that old. But it, I think I can actually pinpoint it to the Jurassic period because it, it has <laughs> preserved a mosquito just there. Wow. Like a piece of amber. Although... No one tell Michael Crichton or there's going to be dinosaurs. That's not powered. And no. you know what? That means it's not going to break. Okay? I, that's, I wouldn't say that. Do you have a mirror in there? No, because you don't need it because you have a controller no, with the because, screens. Well, also when this came out, it was all about name other relevant drug. I think cocaine's always been a bit of a... Uh, <laughs> all right, so I have a remote for my TV screen, well, which you didn't have last time. You just had HDMI inputs. Well, of course, you need a remote if you're going to operate a television. I put that on. Ah, you know what? The ride is good in this. A little bit more sidewall. Get rid of some of those impacts, you know? This drives really, really well. It really, really does. This particular one has been maintained excellently. And as long as the timing chain guy doesn't blow up and the engine turn into just a, a pile of fire and oil smoke, then it's completely reliable. That scares me, though. <laughs> it should scare you. It should scare I everyone. can't seem to turn this on, but I think it's me. Okay. I think that We're going to assume that you suck and that the car is perfect and it, it, there's no yes. electronics in this that would go bad. I'm comfortable back here, but I do get the sense that from the beginning, from the beginning, the, the Range Rover's gone from off-roady to luxury the whole time trying never to lose the off-roadiness which i which i appreciate <laughs> yes, yes no it, it, it has gone up in price a lot that but yeah no it, of course it has because I mean, there's way more luxuries in here like this is like on par with luxury levels of of any of the german manufacturers or even like bentley and, and rolls royce from the era yeah right it's got all the same stuff like a heated and cooled seats and well all i'm not i'm not a leather master but i would i have I don't want to cast this with the same shade of aniline. Sem but I think it's pretty semi-aniline to me. It could be semi-aniline. I know yeah. for a fact that the semi-aniline leather did come on the supercharged autobiography. Oh, it's an option. I'm, I'm not sure that it came, comes on this one, but I don't need it. You might be sitting in it right now. On, yeah, that's very possible. No, this is this still drives excellently. And I, this has got to be, honestly, like usually the cars that we get for the in the price bracket are, are, are a little bit worse for wear. But like this one, you know, it's got a high mileage. 140,000 kilometers. 140,000 kilometers. This is this has been maintained, and you know what? I here's the problem, and this is why it's like a it's like a drug, Range Rovers, because you get in one of these and you you, you you bumble down the road, and it's going side to side, but it's soft and you're you're luxurious and your butt's being cooled, and you're like, damn it, I want one. But it but it's not so soft. <laughs> like to compare it to actually a competitor, the LX. We did an old versus new LX, and both of them had no confidence in the drive because of how soft they were. This one does. I mean, like, it feels like an off-road vehicle, obviously. It's a bit tippy. Yeah, but it hasn't gone too far. It hasn't done the LX thing. No. You still feel very much in control. The steering is good. The, you know, the visibility is fantastic. I really like the way that the power is delivered. The transmission is totally fine, right? I, this, is, this is just such a cool, and, and I hate that I want one. Okay, if, if you take reliability out of the equation, <laughs> You can't, you obviously. Can't, can't. Yeah, you, you can't. can't, but if you did, this is obviously the answer over the old LX. Okay. Obviously. It looks way cooler. It feels more special, right? But, I mean, if you're going to buy a big, old, comfy SUV, it's got to be a Toyota product, and it's so boring to land there. Listen, if you're one of the, if you're one of the people who braves an old Range Rover... <laughs> and then goes to the forums for support. For support. Uh, emotional and financial... Um, then, you know what? I get you. I get. I get them. Yeah. I was like, I was like, listen, this is really, really, really cool, and I would love to drive one of these. If you told me right now, honestly, that this would never break down, and I could just have this as my daily vehicle, and it was not horrible on gas for the rest of my life, I'd be like, all right. Interesting. This is totally fine. All right, brand new ones. The Ventega. Ventega. My Bug GLS. The problem with the Bentayga is that if you park a Range Rover in your driveway in like a suburban neighborhood, everyone's gonna go like, oh no, you got a Range Rover, it's pretty nice. No one knows that it's $200,000. But if you park a Bentley yeah. on your driveway, everyone's like, oh wow, that guy, he's got a Bentley. Uh, like, it's great that new Bentayga though. Oh, it's amazing, of yeah. course it is. But it's still a jewelry store on wheels. And like, and you somehow get away with the luxury in one of these. Because it's like, oh, well, it's an off-road car. Something. Yeah, it's got some leather. No, I think I think they Stuff nailed. Roadie. I think they nailed the new one. They nailed the new one, and okay, so they didn't nail this one because it's not 
it, they don't last. But hey, we, <laughs> where's the evidence? Anecdotally, it is anecdotal. Statistic aside, yeah, all, all the numbers. This the, is the, going the, great. The, the documented engine failures, irrelevant. Anecdotally, I've decided that the old Range Rover is Lost forever. just as cool as the new Range Rover and will last forever. It's probably a good thing that anecdotal evidence isn't gospel. However, we do only have our experience of these two vehicles to go by, and in isolation, we're very impressed. The 2010, despite its age and reputation, feels solid and luxurious, and the new one keeps all the Range Rover heart whilst managing to bring its tech and styling to the forefront of post-opulent, minimalist, modernism, contemporaneousness. And yes, that last one is actually a word. I looked it up. Uh, is it correct to use here? I don't know. So, can we actually recommend a 2010 high mileage Range Rover? Our lawyers have recommended that we don't answer that question. But as far as we can tell, these vehicles deserve all the praise that they get. And as for the horror stories, well, forums don't lie. Thanks for watching.